Adobe Edge Animate is great when it comes to creating any sort of animation or interactivity. It does a really effective job. In fact, I can jump in here, select Create New, quickly create any sort of object or import it, and really start animating it. Now, since I've turned on Auto Keyframe, it adds those keyframes. I can have a start here, maybe go in one second, move it to the other side, and you can see how it creates that animation. Okay, that's great, wonderful, very powerful, but I can go beyond, um, you know, what Edge Animate can do in terms of the timeline and start to use JavaScript to animate, okay? And what's great about Edge Animate is it doesn't lock me into any one way of using or animating uh, any of my content uh, because notice this is an HTML file, okay? So I can save this. I'll just save this to this example folder. We'll call this example. I'm using this HTML file. That's what I'm using. So this means I can use any JavaScript library or framework that I want right in Edge Animate. And that's what I want to show you how to do. In fact, the library I want to use is what is called GreenSock. Now, since I do have a Flash background, I'm used to using GreenSock for uh, programmatically creating animation. You can go to GreenSock.com, look for the GreenSock animation platform. You'll download the JavaScript just like I've done here. I've downloaded the JavaScript files. I can go in here to source, into these minified versions. I can use any one of these. Tween Max really has everything, so I'm literally going to take that. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to put it right in here. In fact, in a new folder called JS. So that's where this Tween Max will go, in that JS, that that JS folder. You can see my other assets. Okay, so I'm working on this HTML page. You can see my Edge JavaScript files. This is just a data a file that contains mostly metadata, to be honest. But I can now start using this Tween Max min. Okay, so if I actually go back out to GreenSock, you can start to see. Uh, what you can do. So this is getting Tweenlight into your HTML page. It's literally just pulling that in exactly as you'd expect, just like that. So that's what I do is add that to my HTML page. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to add it right in here and uh, really start to have some fun animating this content. Alright, here it is. In fact, as I take a look, I want to add it right in here after the Adobe Edge runtime end, but basically right at the top. It's in that JavaScript folder. That's the name of the JavaScript file that I'm using, and that's all I need to do there. So closing that. And now I can open it up, open up this uh, uh, Edge animation. It'll ask me to reload that page because you've changed it in Dreamweaver or Edge Code. And now I can start working with my content, okay? I'll just get rid of that uh, because I want to add just something a little bit more slick, which is just this lovely image of Albert Einstein that uh, I want to start animating. And again, I can use the timeline to animate him all I want. Okay, I can start to resize this. Whatever I need to do, I can position this accordingly, but now I want to start adding some animation based on when you click on this picture. So, with it selected, I can go right up here and open up the actions, the JavaScript, on click, go ahead and do something. Well, what do you do here? you can use these code snippets. So you can go ahead and get an element, and it's nice that you get these comments, but it's saying, hey, you know, get, get the element that you want to use. It's going to be Einstein in this case. And this just defines Einstein as this variable. So anytime I refer to element, it's actually referring to this Einstein image, okay? Pretty straightforward there. Um, moving on from that, I can really start to use GreenSock. So if I jump, jump back out here, Notice there's some basic tweening that you can read about, but basically it's your object, how many seconds you want it to animate, and then the various properties, okay? So that's all I need to do is start uh, using that line of code right in here. So I can, in this case, I'm using tween max, and I'm really just grazing the surface when it comes to this. Um, 
this uh, this library does an excellent job. Element is what I want to animate over the course of say two seconds. And now typically I would animate maybe the position something like that. That's what it would look like. Okay, that's actually in, in action script you'd write something like that. But these are CSS properties we're dealing with. So what I'd want to do is encapsulate it actually within these curly braces would be my properties that I'd type up. But again, within these curly braces, I'd say, hey, you know what? CSS is what I want to animate. And then within those curly braces, I can have all the fun that I want uh, moving items around. So that's literally how it's done. Okay, again, within these curly braces, the CSS right in here, these are the properties that I'm going uh, to go ahead and animate. Uh, so with that done, all I need to do is preview and browser, which I'm going to just use Command Enter from here on out. You can see right there, if I click on him, he's going to move 300 pixels. Sure enough, he moves over 300 pixels. Easy enough having him move programmatically okay alright so let's move on from that I can take a look and start adding more properties okay so I can start to scale it if I want to I can scale it up 1.5 so like 50 percent okay I can even start adding some easing so outside of those properties I can start to add some easing my ease is going to be say elastic ease out okay so I can add that right in there uh, from there in fact if I take a look at my timeline I can see the easing right here so you can see that easing elastic how it does that bounce okay so that's and it does goes beyond its final sort of resting place but I can programmatically add that in which is exactly what I did right here okay so I'd say that looks pretty good and from there can save this and command enter and you can see it bounce and get larger okay so this is nice I mean I can start to programmatically change this any way I want but now this is this is great because I can use edge animate to um, sort of position this any way I want so I might want to you know scale him down so let's scale down to transform you know I can skew him so I want this to look to like it's a maybe like a card sitting on a table I can manipulate it kind of like that okay let's just take down that background color but I can go ahead and position that something like that you you get the idea I'm trying to make it look like it's just a card sitting on the table okay so I want to visually be able to manipulate this because doing this programmatically would just take me forever okay but visually I'm able to create this uh, this look and then coming in here I can just start to reset a lot of these properties or pretty much do whatever I want. So I can have the skew X be zero degrees. You're wondering, hey, where did that come from? Well, let's take a look right over here. And with this selected, as I take a look at this, I'll roll over it. Oh, skew X is set to 32. And what does my, um, my JavaScript do? Is it's going to make it 0 degrees. Okay, so that's where that come from, comes from. Skew Y, which is the property just beneath it. Change that to 0 degrees as well. And then I can start to deal with the rotation. Setting that back down to 0 if I want to as well. So you can start to see how I'm able to reset everything, and it's all based on these properties. So I can even come up here and, you know, what if I, what if I have this as sort of a semi-transparent? I can change its opacity. Again, rolling over that, opacity, easy enough, coming in here, and this will be the last property I change. Opacity, set that to 100. Okay. All right, with that done, I'll... Command enter, click, and you can see him pop up, and he's alive. Kind of pops up pretty drastic because I also have him scaling up as well. Okay, so I'd probably want to actually just change that, but um, take that back down to one. All right, so I've changed these properties. He bounces up. I'd say, okay, that's fine. Uh, but there's so much more that you can do with this uh, this whole library. In fact, I can go beyond, um, you know, even doing this elasticity. Because what if I want it to loop infinitely? So it's going to pop up and then go back down and pop up and go back down. Okay, well, I can do that by adding in yo-yo. So, yo-yo, true. 
Well, how many times do you want it to yo-yo? Well, before that, I'd say repeat, you know, five times, four times, or minus one, which will never get reached, and it will go infinitely, okay? So repeat one, yo-yo is true. So it's going to bounce up and then go back down, okay? So that's what's going to happen. Running this, clicking. Again, I took out that yo-yo, but you can see it go down and up. Okay, I don't have to worry about uh, doing anything in the timeline. I've done everything uh, using this JavaScript library, pretty straightforward. And then from there, you can get more complex. If I could just open up, uh, you know, a, f a final example of what you can do with it, just so you can get a, a vision for how you can treat this. Is you know, here are all those panels. Here's Einstein. I can take Joan of Arc, for instance, and I can take a look at that code because on click, Joan of Arc, she she moves to the left and starts moving all of these other items as well. So everything shifts around. That's how I'm uh, making everything move, okay? So I'm moving everything around, and uh, that's how it works. On mouse enter, it gets larger. On mouse leave, it goes back down to its original size. And let's take a look at how this looks as I run it. Again, mouse enter, it increases the scale. If I decide to click on Joan of the Arc, that moves. It starts to um, you know, slide that text over, and you can start to see what I can do uh, with this JavaScript library. But again, this is just an example showing you that Edge Animate doesn't lock you into any one way of doing things. If you're used to using a JavaScript library, go ahead and use it. Use the timeline. It just gives you a lot of freedom, and that's, that's why I enjoy it. So I encourage you to check it out for yourself.